Fun, fast and unbeatable. That's the short description of 2003-2005 Tel Aviv Maccabi. Coach Pinniger, Sean and company won two Euroleague titles in two seasons while winning 80% of their games and leading the league in scoring by a crazy 7-point margin in 2004. All of this while entertaining the crowds with a gorgeous style of play, alley-oop dunks, no-look passes and unreal pace. The European version of Showtime Lakers was as fun to watch as it was hard to beat. And in this video you are going to see why this Tel Aviv Maccabi was the best Euroleague team ever assembled. The famous saying goes as follows, individual talent wins you games, but teams win the championships. Well, in those two years Maccabi was the combination of both. In 2004, they had four players in the top 23 of the Euroleague filtering by efficiency. Next year, they outdone themselves. Parker, Vujicic, Baston and Jesikavicius were all in the top 15 by average efficiency. Now, efficiency stat is overrated, but we can all agree that Maccabi had four of the 10 or 20 best players in the league. And they were all led by Piniger Sean, a coach slash showman who once publicly said that his philosophy is to score one more point than the opponents. That statement was obvious on the basketball court. Maccabi's game at that time revolved around flying in transition and freedom in half-court possessions. They averaged a staggering 87 points per game in 2004, 92 in 2005, crossed the 100-point mark on 8 occasions out of 46, with the most famous one coming in the 2004 final against skipper Bologna. That night the Yellows destroyed Italians 118-74 while playing in front of their raucous crowd. Transition offense was their bread and butter, but creating an advantage in half-court wasn't a problem either. Parker was a mystery for any opposing defense in isolation situations, Golden Boy Sharas had a masterful passing and shooting off the dribble in the pick and roll combo. Vujic could score against anyone in the post or create for a teammate with his outstanding vision. And Baston was a perfect pick and roll companion for Jesikavicius and the one that did all the little things extremely well. Sharas, to surround these four stars, you had elite role players, which on any other team would have been offensive leaders. Burstein, Sharp, Bludenthal, every one of this trio could shoot the lights out and it was exactly what Maccabi needed. If you have four players who can create advantage easily because they are so good, all that's left to do is find the best shot and knock it down. That's exactly what Tel Aviv did as they also were the best three-point shooting team in the two-year span. Some of you might think now, how can this Maccabi be the best European team ever if they were one Jalgiris made free throw, one lucky pass or one shot away of not even being in the final four in their first year together? Well, luck was on their side too, but they dominated later in the Final Four and displayed even more dominant performance in the next season, winning 20 of 24 games and shutting down all similar talks. Look how smooth and in sync they were in transition. All five guys immediately sprinting down the court after a defensive rebound. The Yellows were kind of a modern team already 20 years ago, pick and roll based half court offense which didn't bother to shoot threes on fast break. Their main offensive concepts were quite simple. It all started with early empty corner pick and rolls when defenses were not fully ready. Watch Burstein go all the way to the rim here. <laughs> they cleared one side of the court to give Parker and Sharas chances to reject the screen and if not, attack the middle of the court, from where they could find open teammates on the roll or in the corners. The problem was that Maccabi guards had little trouble finding a way around the first line of defenders, which caused chaotic rotations and resulted in open shots everywhere around the court. Tel Aviv had different ways to get into side pick and rolls if denied a chance to play it in the transition. One of the most famous ones 
was by using UCLA cut by Playmaker, where we got to witness the big to big alley oops. <laughs> Baston was amazing at rolling to the rim as well as a great athlete and we will see more of it in the next clips. Spain pick and roll which exploded in Europe in the last 10 years and now is a part of almost every Euroleague team playbook was used by Maccabi already 20 years ago in both side and middle pick and rolls. Their goal was obvious, to open up a pass inside for Baston and score easy 2 points. It might not have happened to be the case all the time but it did work by confusing opponents and allowing us to see a glimpse of the great Maccabi passing and teamwork. The main man behind Maccabi's offensive prowess was Sharunas Yesikavichus, who at that time was no match for any opponent in Europe. Lithuanian was a master at pick and roll. Even without the best athletic abilities, he had no trouble getting inside the paint. Knowing when to change speeds worked just fine. Sharas was automatic shooting after dribble, and I don't think I need to tell you about his passing. So whatever defense you threw at him, he responded with the other. Backing off the point guard and protecting the pass, that would be 3 points from deep. Doubling on the pick and roll or when he got inside, that would be a wide open shot or a layup for someone else. And like I said, Maccabi role players had no difficulties giving you buckets. If Sharas wasn't enough, Maccabi could always rely on Anthony Parker two-time Euroleague MVP. American was superior to everyone else in his position athletically and also possessed a serious bag of scoring skills. Now, this is why Pinninger Sean was the optimal coach for this Maccabi team. He didn't get in the way. Parker is unstoppable one-on-one, -on -one. let's give him chances to attack one-on-one. -on -one. Like this set here, where the other four players stand near the baseline creating a lot of driving gaps for the American. Or here an ISO on the side, making it difficult for power players to come and double. And those were needed because in some cases, you couldn't defend much better than this. Parker's game was a step above everyone else, and this jumper hanging in the air for a long time illustrates that magnificently. <laughs> Maccabi's front court had no less star power than their backcourt. Nikola Vujicic was a lock to give you baskets near the rim, while also offering Gershon an additional way of creating offense. Great passing was a trademark of this team and Vujicic was one of the keys to such a potent offense. While he played back to the basket, Maccabi's go-to move was to set up a stagger or a pin down on the weak side for the man in the corner. Man oh man did it work efficiently. It's a shame the shot doesn't go in here, but this football type pass from Vujicic into an open space had to be in the video to once again emphasize how well oiled Maccabi's offensive engine was and how amazingly Vujicic could pass. The player that glued everything up and made them unbeatable was Maceo Baston. Apart from being a great pick and roll partner for anyone on the team, the American big man did all the little things, all the Draymond Green type of stuff need a charge, expect him to sacrifice his body. Shots not going in and you need second chances, he will find a way to get you that offensive rebound. And then there was his importance on the other side of the court, which we haven't looked into yet. Not because Maccabi were bad defensively, they ranked in the middle of all teams in that category during both seasons. That's because Pinninger Sean's philosophy was to score more and Maccabi, as you saw in this video, had little to no problem in doing that. Anyway, Baston was the main figure on defense too, protecting the rim often while guards got beaten a bit too easily off the dribble. The Yellows also used other more interesting defensive schemes like this 1-2-2 matchup zone to hide their defensive weaknesses and it worked well enough, leading to many opponents' mistakes and usual offenses being disrupted. To cap off, from 2003 to 2005, Tel Aviv Maccabi had the strongest core group of individuals ever seen in Euroleague courts. With the help of their wild fans, they dominated in every arena they stepped in and did it in a fashion never seen before or after. Titles, various statistics and this video material combined, it is safe to say that in those two years we witnessed the best Euroleague team ever assembled. Do you agree? Or you have some other historic teams that comes to your mind? 
let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you next time.